Hi everybody, this is Eddie Gabor, Managing Partner of Key Advisors Group, and I wanted to send this video out just to kind of talk about inflation, okay, and why we believe inflation is going to persist well into next year and ultimately become a big headwind for the markets in our opinion. Now, thanks to our research and a lot of really smart people that push out some wonderful information, we started pounding the table in January that inflation was going to be a problem in 2021. And most people disagreed with that. They felt like it was a head fake. And to fairness to them, they probably thought it was a head fake because we've seen many head fakes in regards to inflation over the last 40 years that never materialized. But now we are at a very critical state in regards to inflation. And as we go into this fourth quarter of 2021 and go into 2022, I cannot find a catalyst that tells me that inflation is not going to be a problem. I can't find anything that points to the fact that inflation is going to be transitory in the sense that the prices are going to come back down to where they were just six months ago. And you can look at so many factors that point to that. And ultimately, inflation will be a headwind next year for the economy and potentially cause the markets to go haywire sometime in the first half of next year. And I mean haywire in a negative sense, right? So when you study economic cycles and you look at inflation, the very beginning, very beginning of an inflationary cycle like we have seen since the end of last year and going into the first half of 2021 is actually very lucrative for stocks and certain asset classes. And we've seen that this year with some of the amazing performance in certain sectors uh, that are sensitive to inflation. And then you get to a late cycle in regards to inflation, where then you start to get inflation that has peaked and has really become a headwind for the consumer. And that is where we're going to be heading as we go into the first half of next year, my humble opinion. And you can just look at many factors here. All right, let's start with food costs. Okay. Now, look, the government can tell us CPI index and use whatever metrics they want to use. We take a look at how we feel it's going to affect consumer behavior and discretionary spending. Because at the end of the day, the U.S. economy, 70% of it is based on consumer spending. And if the cost of food is going up significantly, that is less money in their pocket. That's less money to spend on discretionary items. That's less money to spend on travel and entertainment and restaurants and the things that we need to stimulate the economy. So food costs, in our opinion, are not going down. I just talked to a farmer last week. He's a big farmer in our area. And he said that the chemicals and products that they use next year, their suppliers have already told them they're going to see significant price hikes. Okay. And look, at the end of the day, the consumer pays that. The business owner is not going to eat that entire increase in cost. The other thing is freight cost. Okay. Take a look at what it costs for freight. Freight is how things move from one area to another, you know, Food and materials come to us by freight, whether it's a tractor trailer load that's coming down I-95 or whether it's a ship that's coming from China with lots of goods and products on that. When you look at how much those prices have increased, they are drastic increases that even if they stop going up, they're not going to come down fast enough to loosen up the supply chain in a way that prices will increase. And so freight costs have gone through the roof. There's a chip shortage right now as well too, okay? Uh, so again, I talked to an individual who needs to buy a tractor trailer. That company told them they cannot get them a tractor trailer until 2023, okay? That is two years away. So again, it's pointing to a fact that we have a problem in regards to freight. Uh, there's a shortage of truck drivers as well, too. So when you take a look at the disruption and how much freight has increased and you couple that with the fact that we don't even have enough truck drivers to get our goods and services from one place to another, that's very disruptive and very, very inflationary. And it's not going away anytime soon. The next thing I'll look at is shelter. Okay. And shelter is housing. Housing prices have gone through the roof nationally, okay? And a lot of it is due to the supply-demand dynamics. Uh, we have about the tightest supply that we have seen in years. And that is why prices have gone up the way that they have. 
And now in some areas, the price of housing has priced the consumer out of being able to afford a home. And now they're going to go rent. And you're going to see the same supply demand dynamics in the rental market as you see in the housing resale market. So rents are going to go through the roof. That's our personal opinion. So you have shelter going through the roof. You have a supply chain disruption that is causing prices to inflate. You have food costs that are continuing to rise. And then we take a look at labor costs. Okay, The biggest expense a business have is labor costs. And when you look at the labor costs and how much it costs to pay somebody today to work for you, it's a lot more expensive than it was six to 12 months ago. And when you have increased labor costs on top of everything else that I just said to you, that's gonna pass on to the consumer, okay? So when we look at housing, when we look at shelter, when we look at food, when we look at the supply chain disruption, oh, and by the way, when we look at oil, Oil could be at 80 to $85 a barrel by the end of this year. Who knows? That is more for the cost of gas for everyday families. That is five dynamics that have changed in a big way in just six months that in our opinion doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. And so we see the first half of next year being a potential problem because of how high inflation is. And then the Fed may have to move faster than they're leading us to believe. And if the Fed has to move really fast because they miscalculated inflation, that's when you get the double digit corrections that people have been predicting that have been dead wrong on for 2021, okay? So those dynamics have been unfolded yet, which is why we have not jumped on that trade yet. And we have recommended for certain clients to buy the dip. But as we go to next year, inflation is going to be a problem. It's going to be a headwind for growth, and it's going to be a much more challenging environment for investors. So look, I don't mean to sound so doom and gloom, but my job is to tell you what we're seeing, whether it's good or bad. Now, if it turns out to be bad, as we're saying, that means there's going to be a wonderful opportunity potentially for investors as this market and economy resets. But it's too early to tell. But if you can't tell, we have a strong conviction that inflation is not going anywhere anytime soon. And so you need to be prepared for it as an investor. And just as important, you need to understand how inflation can impact your portfolio. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email uh, and I'll be happy to address them on my next video. Thank you and have a great day.